الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنحتدي لولا أن حدانا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم وما يتي الله والرسول فقد فاز فوزا عظيما صدق الله وقال رسول صلى الله عليه وسلم قال بني الإسلام لا خم شهادة لا إله إلا الله وأن محمد رسول الله وإكامة الصلاة وإيتاء الزكاة وحج البيت وصوم رمضان صدق الرسول أما بعد Indeed we praise and we thank Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has created everything the originator of the heavens and the earth and whatever else he had pleased he has created but we praise and thank him especially in that he has guided us to deen, to Islam so that we have an opportunity to understand what is happening around us to understand our very origin and our existence to understand the forces that are operating within us and around us today in the world that we live in if we were to look back a few generations back let's say just about 50 years back we would find that the standards that are held as norm, those standards that we accept as normal today would in no way have been accepted 50 years ago. Society has evolved, yes, but what has happened to the mankind is that more and more he finds himself in difficulties. More and more he is forced to accept things against his very understanding of maybe to narrow it down of what is morally right and wrong. So today, inshallah, with that being said, I wish to remind myself anew, as the brother has observed just now, that in the lives of those who have gone before us, the messengers of Allah, that there are many, many beautiful examples as to how we can deal with our situation today. So I remind myself anew of the object of our lives. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ما خلقت الجن والإنس إلا ليعبدوا because sometimes we seek to lose focus to forget what the goal of this life is and there is a narration in Tirmidhi that Ibn Abbas رضي الله تعالى عنه 
He reported that one day he narrates that he was riding behind the Messenger of Allah وسلم, and the Messenger of Allah addressed him saying to him, O oh young man, O oh lad, I am going to teach you some words of wisdom. And I want that we listen to the advice that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, was giving to this young lad. And then we will examine some events after that. So that we can ask ourselves, because every time we hear something from the lives of the messengers, something that Allah has recorded for us, it must all come back to us for our guidance. Because this is what is intended from all of this. Not just the narration, not just knowing these stories, but for it to somehow fit into my life and into your life. So the Messenger of Allah is saying to Ibn Abbas that, Oh lad, I'm going to teach you some words of wisdom. And he said to him, Guard the commandments of Allah and he will guard you. How beautiful was the first advice that was given. Guard the commandments of Allah and He will guard you. Guard the commandments of Allah and you will find Him in front of you. And when Any one of us are really cornered when any one of us are in a dire situation where nothing can help us. Most of the time, that is when people generally remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Having exhausted all the other options. As though that now, okay, nothing now works. Let me try Allah. Nabi Sallallahu was saying to this young fellow that you guard the commandments of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and He will guard you, and you will find Him in front of you. And when you have to ask for something, ask from Allah. And when you seek help, seek help from Allah. When you have to ask, ask of Allah alone and seek help from Allah alone. I'll continue with the narration, but to reflect on what is being said to us. Each and every one of us, as we grow in our homes, in our parenthood, in our families, we are trained differently. We are trained based on the situation in our homes, based on our parents, our elders, their understanding of what is life all about. Based on that, they program us unknowing to us. They program us to have certain dependency on certain things. Sometimes that dependency is to become a very educated person in the rules and regulations of the world. Sometimes that dependency is to aim towards a job, different categories, 
If you're a farmer, then you will aim in that direction. You will want to own, instead my father has a hundred acres, I'll be thinking, well, by then, I'll have a thousand acres, like that. So the situation varies. And we never stop some time to think, why is it happening? In any case, each and every one of us know our stories. So let us look at what Nabi Sallallahu was saying to this young fellow. And he said to him, knowing that if you keep the limits, you keep the commands of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, we know his commands is setting certain limits for us and setting certain goals for us and putting into our lives a certain discipline. And here we talk about the Islam. That what Nabi Sallallahu have said, what is Islam, what is Deen? Believe in Allah, establish a prayer, give charity, fast in Ramadan, make Hajj, inshallah. And around this is our life. Around these things, is our lives. But sometimes, unfortunately, we find that our life goes on and then the limits and the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are squeezed in. Bearing in mind our present situation, it is important that we understand and we work hard for that understanding by begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knowing, seeking the knowledge of the commandments of Allah and depending, we have to learn the dependency of Allah much more than we will depend on the dollar or the job these are the two factors that has been bombarded into us that if you don't have certain things, then certain things can't happen. The most important thing about this argument, if you don't have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala close to you, keeping his commands, keeping the limits he set, obeying him, and always depending on Allah that when we need something, we ask only of Allah. Now, don't get me wrong. We have to make effort. But the whole dependency, the whole condition, the feeling inside of us has got to be with Allah. So we continue. And then he said to him, he said that you must have faith, you must believe that if the entire mankind gathered to benefit you with something, they can only benefit you with that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written for you. And if the whole of mankind together, they should gather to harm you with something, they can only harm you with that which has been decreed for you. And then he said, the pens of destiny have been lifted and the scrolls are dried. The pens of destiny has been lifted and the scrolls are dried. We are not going into argument in the that the Sheikh is here, maybe after the sermon, after the khutbah and afterwards you can ask him. But we are told that this is not a matter that we go into, it is a matter that we accept. And so to bring this matter to reality, we will make reference of two stories in the Quran. Briefly, we will make mention of the story of Musa السلام, and Musa and Khidir. And here I'm taking it for granted that we are all acquainted with these stories. And we will make mention 
of the story of Yusuf alayhi salam. Yusuf alayhi salam, when he was a young fellow, a young lad, he came to his father and he said, Oh my father, I see such a wonderful dream. I see such a dream. And his father advised him about making his dream known to his siblings. But what we find in the story of Yusuf alayhi salam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have told us it is such a beautiful story is that the number of events that took place from the time Yusuf alayhi salam had that dream to the fulfillment of that dream were a number of years. A number of years and a number of events. If you are not acquainted with the story of it, I don't think that you are not, but Surah Yusuf. Brothers and sisters, let us put our lives, ourselves, into that situation with Yusuf alayhi How is it that my life has been going from my days when I was a young lad or a young child, conscious what my thinking was, my dealings to present day. Today, present day to day, not only here in America, but throughout the world, very challenging to say the least. There are people in the Philippines that are struggling because disaster is striking them. There are people in America here who have just finished dealing with fire and drought and now dealing with snow. There are people who had a secure, comfortable life in the city and around the world. We are dealing with COVID. My dear brothers and sisters, when we put all of this bundle together into my life, and your life as individuals, that is when we'll have to evaluate ourselves to see where we are in terms of our serving of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is important for us to reflect. It is important to, for us to reflect as to what Nabi Sallallahu have said to Ibn Abbas at that time, Keep the commandments of Allah. He told him those things in the first and assured him that once you do that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guard you and he will be in front of you. And then understand that there are certain things in life you are not going to be able to change. But what does that mean? It means you still resign yourselves and depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so we turn to the story of Musa alayhi salam. Musa alayhi salam, he wanted to have an understanding of a knowledge that he did not have. So he was directed to go to one of the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Surah Kaf, you'll find the story that we're referring to. And there were certain things that took place in front of his eyes that with the knowledge that he had based on what normal judgment should be like, he find that these were things that were not balanced. You just got a lift over across the river. And then you turn around and damage the vessel, the boat. Doesn't make sense. You saw a young man and you kill him. Doesn't make sense. You do something not expecting a reward, not asking for any reward, it doesn't make sense. When you need, brothers and sisters, our intelligence, the knowledge that we have, 
based on what kind of upbringing we have had and based on Allah's mercy in making things easy for us to understand is not always correct in the way we interpret events. This is the point I wish to remind myself and you about. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in charge. This world belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of us are the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore let us be careful in what we say, what words we utter based on events that are happening around us. And we are spending less time keeping the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and praising and thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has opened for us the door of Islam. He has opened for us our hearts to know him. My dear brothers and sisters, when Musa alayhi salam was a baby, his mother, were in, were, she was inspired to take her baby and put it in the river. What kind of person will do that? With all the wisdom, but it was based on her faith, her iman, based on her trusting in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the very child that she wanted to protect from the enemy was now in the hands of the enemy. Things are not what they appear based on our judgment. So let us take a step back. We are believers. We are people who say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la. Wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasul. And what the Messenger of Allah has left with us. If we hold it closely with the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, events will be easy for us to understand. But more than that, we will be able to safeguard ourselves. We will be able to safeguard ourselves for the time when we will have to give an account for our time here, for our thoughts, our words, and our actions. We pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me and you and make it easy for us to benefit from the reminders and accept us from among those who will hold fast and will enter the Jannah. Barakallahu lana wa lakum fil Quran al Nazim wa nafana wa iyaakum bil ayati wa zikri al Hakim. أستغفر الله لي ولكم أجمعين إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يحده الله فلا مدل له وما يدلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا نبده ورسوله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله ملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم عينا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن إبادتك ربنا إننا آمنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكنا أذاب النار ربنا تنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكنا أذاب النار 
ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد اذ هديتنا وحب لنا من لدنك رحمه انك انت الرحمن ربنا لا تجعلنا فتنه للقوم الظالمين ونجنا برحمتك من القوم الكافرين اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ان الله يامر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يذكركم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم ودعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله تعالى على واولى واز وجل وحم وتم واكبر اخر دعوانا الحمد لله واقيموا الصلاه